Welcome back to the Crypto Bot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and later in this video, I'll be giving you a full update on the Bitcoin and Ethereum price, as always. But in just a moment, I'll be giving you a full update on the Celsius situation because they have been extremely busy on chain. And over the past 24 hours, they've paid over $150 million down on their debt positions. And this whole situation is very important to pay attention to if you're invested in crypto whatsoever. So definitely stick around. First of all, just bringing you up to date with the Celsius situation with everything that's happened on chain over the past one day or so. And just starting off with this $50 million transaction, which happened a little over one day ago. It happened just before my last update video that I posted yesterday. And this 50 million USDC got sent to their Aave debt position, which is this position right here. And basically, you can think of this as a loan where the loaned out money is the stable coins and the collateral that is provided for the loan are these cryptos. And right now, at the time of recording this video, this Aave position is in debt by around 178 and a half million US dollars, but its net worth overall is actually around 442 million US dollars. So that figure is, of course, made up by the assets minus the liabilities, the debt. So in other words, if they sold off some of these assets that are used as collateral in this debt position in order to actually pay down this debt, then they'll be left with around 442 million US dollars left over. So once once again, this $50 million transaction happened a little over one day ago, and that got sent to this position to pay down that debt. And since then, Celsius has been extremely busy on chain. Since that last update, Celsius Network has paid down another 6.3 million US dollars on one of their other loans, which is known as their Bitcoin Vault, or more specifically, their wrapped Bitcoin Vault, which is this right here. And right now, these numbers are slightly different from the screenshots I'll show you in just a moment, because of course, there's different steps to bring you up to the present day. But basically, to explain this, it's very similar to what I said about that Aave debt position. This right here is essentially a loan where currently there's around $82 million worth of debt. But to back up that debt as collateral, there's almost 24,000 wrapped Bitcoin, which is the same price of a Bitcoin. And right now, that's just under half a billion US dollars worth of Bitcoin. But in order to withdraw all of that Bitcoin from this debt position, they need to pay down all of that debt. But of course, there is a large amount that is currently available to withdraw because they have been paying down the debt, but they're not all the way there. So out of this nearly 24,000 wrapped Bitcoin, their available to withdraw is sitting at around 18,000 wrapped Bitcoin. But once again, in order to access the other 6,000 wrapped Bitcoin, which is obviously a lot of money, they need to further pay down this vault debt. And for those who might be new to all of this, the liquidation price is basically the price per Bitcoin where this collateral starts getting liquidated because at this price per Bitcoin, the collateral would have fallen so much in value to the point where the collateral is barely backing the amount of debt. So with these sort of DeFi loans, there needs to be an over collateralization, which basically means, for example, if you wanted to borrow $100 million from a DeFi application, you would first need to have over $100 million worth of an another crypto like Bitcoin to actually put up as collateral in case you can't pay back your debt, they will take that Bitcoin off your hands. And once again, if you put up another crypto like Bitcoin, for example, if the price of Bitcoin goes down, then the value of your collateral goes down. And of course, the amount of debt that you owe, that stays the same. So if the value of your collateral, which once again is backing up your debt in the case that you cannot pay your debt, if the value of that collateral falls below a certain threshold, then the lender, which is the DeFi application that gave out this loan, Loan, automatically starts liquidating that collateral and usually that gets dumped onto the market. And that threshold where that starts actually happening for this position at the time of recording this video, it is sitting at around $4,967 per Bitcoin, which means if the price per Bitcoin goes below that price, then this Bitcoin in this collateral starts getting taken out of this position and gets liquidated. But now that I've explained that, going back to the on-chain transactions, and once again, I just mentioned earlier that within the last one day, Celsius has paid down this Bitcoin vault, this position that I just talked about, by 
by around 6.3 million US dollars, which at that stage dropped the liquidation price down to 11.8K. And by the way, in case you haven't figured it out already, the lower the liquidation price, the better, because once again, if the Bitcoin price goes below that liquidation price, then their position starts getting liquidated. So ideally, you want that as low as possible to be as safe as possible. But then what happened was Celsius also withdrew 67,000 Ethereum, which at that stage was worth around 73 million US dollars. And that 67,000 Ethereum was withdrawn from the collateral from two of their debt positions. One of those debt positions was that Aave loan that I just talked about here. And out of this position, they withdrew 30,000 Ethereum from the collateral in this position, which backs up this loan. But once again, they did that after they paid down this debt by around 50 million US dollars. So by paying down that debt, that opened up more Ethereum available to withdraw from the collateral. And the other 37,000 Ethereum came from their compound position, which works extremely similar to that Aave position. So once again, their compound position is another debt position, where at the time of recording this video, there's around $100 million worth of debt, but there's also well over $300 million worth of assets backing that debt as the collateral. So their net worth is sitting at around a quarter of a billion for this overall position on compound. And once again, not so long ago, they withdrew around 37,000 Ethereum from this position and 30,000 Ethereum from their Aave position. So overall, that was 67,000 Ethereum. And following that 67,000 Ethereum on chain, we can see that it all moved into this wallet address in this screenshot right here. And then after that 67,000 Ethereum moved into this wallet address, initially 17,000 Ethereum and 15,000 Ethereum in separate transactions were moved out of that wallet, leaving around 35,000 Ethereum remaining in this wallet. And this 32,000 Ethereum that was moved out of this wallet, that was moved over to another Ethereum wallet before then it got sent to FTX, which is one of the biggest crypto exchanges in the world. And I mentioned here in this tweet around seven hours ago that it's possible Celsius might end up selling this 32,000 Ethereum on FTX to gather more stable coins in order to pay down their existing loans, those debt positions that I just talked about. So once again, out of 67,000 Ethereum, 32,000 Ethereum moved over to FTX. And then there was that other 35,000 Ethereum remaining in this other wallet address. But then what happened was Celsius started dipping into that other 35K Ethereum that was sitting in that other wallet. And this was split up into a couple separate transactions. So first of all, there was this transaction of 25,700 Ethereum. And by the way, that 700 Ethereum was an extra 700 Ethereum they had in that other wallet. But anyway, they ended up moving 25,700 Ethereum over to FTX once again. And then not long after that, they sent the remaining 10,000 Ethereum that was sitting in that other wallet, which makes up that 67,000 Ethereum plus another 700 Ethereum that was already in another wallet. And once again, that final 10,000 Ethereum got moved over to FTX. So basically that 67,000 Ethereum that came from their Aave and Compound positions that I just covered earlier, eventually ended up moving over to FTX. And then what happened was Celsius paid down their Bitcoin vault that I just covered earlier by another 50 million US dollars, which at that stage dropped the liquidation price down to 8.8K per Bitcoin. And pretty much at the same time as that happened, Celsius also paid down their compound position by another $24 million. And I mentioned here that it looks like they're currently making an effort to lower their on-chain debt as much as possible, because basically from what it looks like from looking at these on-chain transactions, we're seeing a lot of separate multi-million dollar transactions worth of stable coins entering into these positions to actually pay down that debt. And then I sent out this tweet right here, the too long didn't read version of the thread, which was basically over the past few hours, Celsius has moved around 67,000 Ethereum out of their Aave and Compound collateral and sent it all over to the FTX exchange. And this is happening as Celsius is continuing to pay down their on-chain debt positions with stable coins. And then what happened not long after Celsius sent that 67,000 Ethereum worth approximately 74 million US dollars to FTX, then what happened was 77 million US dollars worth of stable coins moved into a wallet, a Celsius wallet that they used to pay down their debt positions. And I mentioned here that this 77 million will likely soon be used to pay down more of their debt. And if you actually look at this 77 million dollars worth of stable coins, doing a little more digging on the Ethereum blockchain, 
blockchain and you can find out that that $77 million worth of stable coins came from FTX and got sent to Celsius. And this happened just after Celsius sent around $74 million worth of Ethereum to FTX. So there's a pretty good chance that that 67,000 Ethereum that was once collateral in their compound and Aave debt positions, there's a pretty good chance that that Ethereum was potentially sold on FTX to gather more stable coins in order to pay off their debts. Now, I want to make it clear that that is not 100% confirmed because when crypto flows into an exchange's wallet like FTX, it becomes really hard to find and really hard to know what transactions are happening simply based on the massive amount of inflow and outflows that exchanges receive. But based on the fact that this sequence of events happened very quickly in a short amount of time and with a similar amount of Ethereum in terms of the US dollar value moving into FTX and then a similar amount of stable coins moving out of FTX back to Celsius, that's the information that we can go off and you can of course come to your own conclusions. But once again, there's a pretty good chance that that Ethereum was sold on FTX and turned into stable coins. And then out of this 77 million US dollars worth of stable Stable coins that was then split up into two separate transactions where once again they further pay down their on-chain debt. 64 million US dollars out of that 77 million US dollars was paid into their Bitcoin vault dropping the liquidation price down to 4.9k which is where it currently sits. And if we go into the history of this vault we can see those transactions right here. But obviously that is only 64 million out of that 77 million dollars worth of stable coins that they got back from FTX. And so with the remaining 13 million dollars in stable coins, Celsius further paid down their compound debt position by another 13 million dollars. So after all of this, basically what has happened over the past one day especially is Celsius have actually paid over 150 million US dollars off their loans. So they have reduced their on-chain debt by around 150 million US dollars. And this of course significantly decreases the chance of getting liquidated under those positions. But keep in mind, there's still no way we can actually confirm what their entire position is on and off chain. And even though it is great news that Celsius is reducing their on-chain debt, which reduces their chance of liquidation, unfortunately, it might be the case, as we saw there with that 67,000 Ethereum, it might be the case that they're actually having to sell off a bunch of crypto at these low prices in order to actually pay back that debt. And if that is the case, if Celsius is basically having to sell off some of that collateral in order to actually pay off that debt, then that is not exactly the greatest sign that we could see. But all I can say is at least they're making a good effort to reduce their on-chain debt, which reduces their chance of liquidation for those specific positions. So at least that is a step in the right direction, but let's just hope that they don't have to sell off too much crypto in in order to actually pay off that debt. And I thought I should add in a full disclaimer here. I do not work for Celsius at all. I'm not actually partnered with Celsius in any way. But unfortunately, like a lot of people out there, I do actually have money locked up in Celsius. And as for other lending platforms, I don't have any money in any other lending platform whatsoever. Once again, the only crypto that I have sitting on a lending platform at the moment is the crypto that is locked in Celsius at the moment. And I'm not taking any chances on any other lending platform, at least as of right now. And now jumping into the chart, this right here is the daily Bitcoin chart. And honestly, nothing much has happened over the past one day. Once again, we've experienced a little bit more of a bounce today, but nothing else too much has changed. We are still sitting in this choppy sideways price range, which we can still make money in. If you watched my video a few days ago, talking about how to make money in a crypto bear market, where I specifically cover a simple method to make money in choppy sideways price ranges like this, for example, or like what we saw back here around a month ago. So in the somewhat shorter term relative to the daily time frame, I'm still expecting more choppy sideways price action as the most likely scenario for Bitcoin moving forward. And if you actually zoom into the short term, taking a look at the four hour Ethereum chart, once again, we're still finding a lot of support around that golden pocket sitting at around $19,000 per Bitcoin. And obviously, if you've been watching the channel for longer than a week, you'll know that I've been covering that support level before we even hit that level. And if you're looking at the four hour Bitcoin RSI and the four hour Bitcoin MACD, obviously, we're experiencing a 
little bit of bullish relief, but the MACD, specifically the histogram, isn't showing a lot of bullish momentum at the moment, which once again points towards a lot more choppy sideways price action as one of the most likely scenarios moving forward, maybe slightly bullish, like the Bitcoin price has been performing over the past four days or so. And as for resistance, we do actually have some short-term resistance for Bitcoin at around $20,000 per Bitcoin, and anything above that, I'll be looking towards these highs coming into play at around 21.7 to 21.8k. And just giving you a quick update on Ethereum, this right here is the weekly Ethereum chart, and looking at that 38.2% Fibonacci level, we're still holding strong as of recording this video, and that level of support is sitting at around 1050. And just zooming into the 12-hour Ethereum chart, we're still potentially forming this ascending triangle pattern. Ideally, I'd like to see another point of contact either along this line of support or resistance, once again, another high or another low, because generally speaking, just two touch points along both lines aren't really enough to actually confirm a pattern like this. We really need at least three touch points along one line and two touch points along the other, for example. But either way, it's actually a good sign for Ethereum to see higher lows form while horizontal highs are forming, because this type of price structure actually means we're seeing increased buying demand from what we saw back here compared to right now, whereas the sell pressure is actually remaining somewhat stagnant because we're seeing horizontal highs. But once again, if you're looking at the 12-hour Ethereum MACD, specifically the histogram, this is just chopping around slightly on either side of the neutral level, so we're seeing almost no momentum on the 12-hour chart as of recording in this video, so once again, that leads to potentially more choppy sideways price action. But zooming in further into the 4-hour Ethereum chart, and we're seeing a little bit more bullish momentum for Ethereum in the short term, as I have been talking about over the past two days or so, but this is really just a little bit more bullish momentum than what Bitcoin is experiencing in the short term. But overall, relative to what we saw a few weeks ago, this isn't really anything special. And in order to confirm more bullish price action, I'd like to see a further break above some point of resistance. And we do have a short term point of resistance at around 1160 to 1170 approximately. And anything above that, I'll be looking towards this horizontal line of resistance that I just talked about for this potential ascending triangle pattern. And that is coming into play at around 1270 to 1280. And once again, our short term support for Ethereum is still that golden pocket sitting at around $1,000, which is very close to that 38.2% Fibonacci level on the weekly timeframe coming in at around 1050. And once again, if you've been subscribed to the channel for the last week or two, I've been talking about a short position in the short term and taking profits at this level at around 1000 to 1050. But legally speaking, I cannot actually advise you what to do with your own money. I can only let you know my personal strategy, what I'm doing with my own money. And if you want to know more about my personal strategies and how to make money in crypto, whether or not the price is going down or up or just chopping around sideways, then make sure to check out one of these videos popping up right here. In the top left is a video showing you how you can make money, whether or not the price is going up or down. And in the bottom left is a video showing you how you can make money in choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.